you guys keep asking for more pie recipes and i just happen to love making pies hey everyone welcome to my kitchen in today's video i'm going to show you how i made this delicious chicken pie so sit back relax and let's get started my pie dough is very easy to make you only need four ingredients you'll need flour salt butter and water to start prepare the butter by cutting it into smaller cubes and you want to use cold butter for this to get a flakier crust i'll explain better as we move along cut the butter into smaller cubes i'm using unsalted butter but you can use salted butter or margarine if using any of those two you can skip or reduce the salt next to a bowl add the flour and the salt i'm using all-purpose flour for this also known as plain flour give this a good mix and then add the butter next using your hands gently work the butter into the flour until it starts to look like breadcrumbs you can also do this in a food processor if you have one or you can use a butter cutter I'll provide the link in the description box so you can check that out if you need it. After working the butter in, go through it with your hands one last time to make sure there are no huge chunks of butter left. Once you've made sure of that, create a hole in the middle and add the water. I'm using cold water for this because the cold water helps the butter remain cold so it makes the dough less sticky and easier to work. After adding the water, mix the dough just until it comes together. You want to avoid over mixing the dough as overworking it will make the dough develop gluten which will give you a tougher crust. So definitely avoid kneading, just press like this until the dough comes together. The dough may look a bit dry and it might look like it's not going to come together at first, but trust the process and it will. I'll provide the exact measurement in the description box. If you have a kitchen scale, definitely use that and measure in grams to give you the most precise measurement. If you don't have one, you can also use measuring cups and spoons. Once the dough comes together, take it out and divide in two. This is how your dough should look like on the inside. I'm going to cover this in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge to cool. This step is optional but recommended as refrigerating the dough will keep the butter solid and it will make the dough much more easier to work with. Also, if you overworked your dough, putting it in the fridge will help relax the gluten. Lastly, chilling or freezing the dough also gives you a very flaky crust. Cool for about 30 minutes to 1 hour depending on how long you have. While that's cooling, we can go ahead and make the filling. For the filling, we're going to need some chicken, of course. I like to use chicken breast because it's lean and it doesn't contain a lot of fat, but you can use chicken thighs if you have that. Cut the chicken into smaller chunks, then transfer to a pot, and we're going to get ready to cook that. Season the chicken with your preferred seasoning. I like to use onion, a little bit of bouillon or chicken cubes, salt and garlic powder. Add water then give this a good mix. Cover and allow to cook for about 15 minutes. For the vegetables I like to keep it simple and I use just potatoes, bell pepper and carrots. And I'm using Irish potatoes, also called rosette potatoes. I'm going to wash, peel and dice this into very small cubes. In my previous video, someone asked me if they could use sweet potatoes to make pie. 
truth is i've never tried it i feel it would turn out too sweet but you can definitely try it and let me know how it turns out for a more uniform cut i like to use this manual chopper it's super easy and it also saves a lot of time it's also great for cutting so many different types of vegetables. I showed this in my previous fried rice video and you guys really loved it. So I'm going to add the link in the description box. After prepping all the veggies, check on the chicken. The chicken should be fully cooked by now, so I'm going to shred it. You can also shred this using a fork or using a food processor. Sometimes the food processor makes it too small, which is why I just prefer to use my hands to shred. And as long as the chicken breast is fully cooked, it will shred really easily. I'll just go in one last time to make sure there are no huge chunks of chicken in there. Next, heat up some oil in a pan and add some chopped onions and minced garlic. You're going to cook that down for about two to three minutes until the onions are kind of translucent, then add the chicken. And I forgot to add that you can also use minced chicken for this recipe if you want to avoid the hassle of boiling the chicken first. To do that, follow the same process by frying the onions and garlic Add the minced chicken and cook until it's no longer pink. Coming back to our shredded chicken, toss in the pan for a few minutes and then add the chopped vegetables. Next, season this with a little bit of chicken seasoning, salt and I like to add a little cayenne pepper or chili powder for an extra kick. Give this a good mix. And then lastly, I'm going to add the flour. After adding the flour, cook for about one to two minutes. The flour is what's going to thicken the filling. Another way to do this is by using corn flour and water. To do that, add the water first before adding the corn flour slurry. After cooking the flour down, add enough water but not too much. I'm using about one and a quarter cup. Cover this and allow to cook for about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes, the filling should be ready. It should be thick like this and no longer runny. Also, the potatoes should be cooked but not too soft. Same as the carrots. I'll turn off the heat and add some chopped parsley and this is very very optional. I'll transfer this to a white plate so it can cool down as soon as possible. If you're in a hurry, you can put this in the fridge to cool fast or you can put this in the freezer to cool even faster. Make sure you use a wide plate or a tray and really spread the filling all around thinly so it can cool down completely. Next, Take the pie dough out of the fridge and cut into smaller pieces. This recipe makes about 12 medium pies, so you can cut each wrap into six. If you noticed, the dough is much harder as most of the butter has solidified. So it's so much easier to work with. You can allow the dough stay at room temperature for a couple of minutes so it softens a little so it's easier to roll. When it's ready, roll into your desired shape. I'm making rectangle pies, so I'm going to roll this into a square. You can make any shape you prefer using this recipe. After rolling, I'll use a knife to cut the edges so I can get a cleaner shape. Next, I'll use this dough roller to make a design on one side. This is completely optional, you don't have to do this. This is just me being extra. I used this pattern for my special meat pie which I uploaded a while ago and so many of you loved this design so I'm just repeating this with a different shape. 
and the rolling pin is going to be linked in the description box in case you want it. After rolling, use egg wash to brush the sides of the pastry dough. The egg wash is going to act as a glue and it's going to help seal the pie so it doesn't pop open when baking. Add a good amount of the filling to one side of the pie. Do not add too much filling so you don't have troubles closing it. Seal the pie by crimping the edges with a fork and make sure you're pressing the fork really well so it gets both edges. Repeat the process with all the pies until the dough is finished. If it's taking too long, you can keep the already made pies in the fridge just until you finish the rest. When you're done, transfer to a baking tray. If you're not using a non-stick baking tray, you can line that with parchment paper or you can sprinkle a little bit of flour before adding the pies. When you're down to the last few pies, depending on how fast you are, you can start preheating your oven. Brush a generous amount of egg wash on the pies. This is going to give it a very nice and golden color. The egg wash is the same one we use to seal the pie and it's just one beaten egg. If you don't like your pie brown, you can skip the egg wash and if you like your pie very brown and golden, you can use just the egg yolk to brush the pies instead of the whole egg. You can also use a mixture of egg and milk to get a lighter color crust. If you don't like eggs at all or you don't eat eggs, you can skip this process altogether. You can also use water in place of the egg wash to seal the pie. The last thing you're going to do is poke holes at the top of the pie. The holes are very important because they act as a venting system. So when the pies are in the oven baking, it's going to build up steam. And the poked holes is going to allow the steam escape so the pie doesn't swell up too much. And when you're doing this, make sure the fork is going through the top layer, but not touching the bottom crust. You want to poke about three to four holes per pie. You can also use a sharp knife to make a big tear at the top of the pie. That also works. When you're done, the oven should be fully preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. You're going to bake the pies in the preheated oven for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on how brown you like them. The pies are ready and this is what it looks like. The crust is extra flaky with a very juicy and delicious feeling. Let me know if you found this video helpful and if you made the pies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you already subscribed, thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.